So we've reached the three ways, which is the road that I was telling you, T intersection, you turn right to go to Darwin, left to go to Alice Springs. Filled in um, the petrol tank, and just like two seconds up the road, I'll show you three ways. Just there. Just this brick wall here is the John Flynn Memorial. Let's have a look. The very Reverend John Flynn, Flynn of the Inland, OBEDD of the Presbyterian Church of Australia. Do you know what? I didn't know John Flynn went back this far, 1880 to 1951. His vision encompassed the continent. He established the Australian Inland Mission and founded the Flying Doctor Service. I knew that bit. He bought the Lonely Places, a spiritual ministry, and spread a mantle of safety over them by medicine, aviation, and radio. So the only thing I knew about John Flynn was he had something to do with the Royal, Royal Flying Doctors. The Re Very Reverend... Anybody knows why it's the Very Reverend? Not just Reverend John Flynn, the Very Reverend John Flynn... Presbyterian minister and missionary first visited the Northern Territory in 1912 at a time when the inland two-thirds of Australia had no minister of religion, no doctor and no nurse. Flynn was deeply concerned by this. To overcome the lack of medical facilities he proposed a string of nursing homes across the inland. He was made superintendent of the Australian Inland Mission and in 33 years founded 15 widely scattered hospitals. Those hospitals included Adelaide House in Tilt Street, Alice Springs, which was the first hospital in Central Australia. But Flynn saw that only radio and fast, efficient transport would really overcome the inland's vast distances. At a time when his ideas seemed wild and revolutionary, he developed a scheme which combined aircraft, radios and medicine to provide a mantle of safety for inland people. The establishment of the Royal Flying Doctor Service was mainly due to his vision and energy. I'm not sure why the monument stands in this particular spot and I've just noticed it's a cross. Can you see that? If you can see it behind me you'll see that there's actually a cross up there. Let's go to our next camp spot which is Attack Creek. Bit of information going on about that place as well. Alright, well that was a bit of information. Yeah. Well, I knew that Reverend John Flynn had a lot to do with the Royal Flying Doctor Service. He started it, didn't he? Yeah, and um, it was all because he was trying to connect the inland. He saw that there was no medical services. He got hospitals, but he realised how vast the inland was and how like distant it was for everyone so he put his mind to it and put aircraft and radio together right. and combined it and wow. it was very interesting okay. all right follow those directions so I'll, I'll john to, i'll have to actually watch it to find out you'll, you'll have to watch the episode Cause john because I, I didn't come over with you <laughs> oh. that's all right we've got about another 50 kilometers and we're going to stop at a free camp Beautiful, perfect. Oh, well, you never know. Who knows? So, what were you going in the caravan for then? Turn the fridge on. Over the oh, that's right, that's right. So, our next stop on the list is Attack Creek, Attack Creek. which was what 40 k's up from three ways? 40, 70, 70? I uh, oh, don't know. No. Okay, so Attack Creek pays homage to an explorer called John McDool. Stuart. In 1860, John Stuart turned back on his expedition because he was attacked by an Aboriginal tribe. Wow. Okay. Well, hostile encounter. Hostile encounter. Hostile encounter. But there's a there's right. stuff down there. Let's go have I'll a look. I'll just check the car and make sure I definitely look good. I'm getting a lot of this information from Wiki Camps because I haven't really done um, much research in all this. 
So what, but we'll go down. There's some there's some boards here. Now you can stay at this campsite for 24 hours. Um, it's just off the road, so you'll probably hear a bit of road noise. But it looks quite good and it feels safe. Yeah, so we're still deciding whether we should go here, stay here, or go another 20 kilometres down the road to another one. So there's some some um, oh, firewood. Where? For, for firewood. For BYUs only. But for barbecue use only, John. Yeah. Do you want to read it properly? That's what I said for B. BBQs? You didn't say? say BBQ. What did I say? So for be use only or oh, something. Well, I, sort I don't know. I've got I sort of film. Sk- I sort of skipped the rest of it. You did. Yeah, I don't like it. Alright, let's have a look around here. This plaque is to commemorate Mounted Constable John Charles Shirley, who John. perished in the performance of his duty in this vicinity on the 7th of November 1883. So these rocks, on the 25th of June 1860, John McDowell Stewart and his two companions, William Keckwick and Benjamin Head, reached Attack Creek, their most northerly point on that expedition. Hostile natives and illness forced the party to return. Oh look, perfect to say. How are you going? Today. Perfect to um stay here. Let's go down to Banker Banker. Yeah. Decision made. Did I leave that up to you? Let's go down to Banker Banker and pay. <laughs> I mean, why not pay when you can stay at a free campground? Yeah, we will be a day ahead. So that's sort of good, isn't it? Yeah. No? Yeah, because we we're going to go to Tennant Creek. Okay, tonight we we're supposed to stay at Tennant Creek um, at at Devil's Marbles. Um, but as we've been telling you, the package at the post office. We need to get this package. We need to get this package. I hate being on a time frame. Yeah. Because it was supposed um, to be all about not time frames. And not rushing, but yeah. So we've scrubbed Devil's Marbles and decided to come this way. And we have got Banker Banker on our list. Um, I just didn't realise this was a 24-hour stop. But we will go to Banker Banker now and then make up our mind from there. Yep. Okay. Hi. So we stopped overnight at Benka Benka Homestead. Benka Benka. Benka Benka. When we got here, we were the only ones here. Pretty much all day. Hey, we got here at lunchtime, but by I don't know three o'clock. Oh, they just kept. Can you hear in. all those birds? Oh my God, they're going to. I'm gonna sure keep... they weren't that loud when we got here. Eh? <laughs> they're going to keep us up all I think night. They just moved in. <laughs> So by about 3 o'clock, 3.30, people just kept rolling in. Um, so we're not alone. But I'll take you for a little walk around, show you Bank Banker. It's still being quite nice. I'm glad we can get a powered site now. I think... Um, if we can tie it ass. What was... Making me sweat tonight again. <laughs> it was 32, 34 when we got here. But it's cooled down really good. 34, yeah, 35. No, I've told John we're not going to buy... Uh, well, we had to pay to come here, but... Unpowered. I said we're not going to have a powered site every bloody night because we're going to be in in Darwin. We're going to be in Catherine. Yeah, in a caravan park. No, we're not. No. Bloody forty dollars a night. No. This old FJ Holden. I look at it, mate. FJ. Think that vine's growing all through. Pretty good, I reckon, hey? I Bit of um, policy get that going. That might be me. Bit of e, um, EJ maybe? Oh, I don't know. 
You know how women can talk talk code to each other, and we just know what we're saying, don't we? We just know. Yeah, but us blokes don't listen to women, like, well, not or to you. Did I just say that out loud? I'm not going to get myself into trouble. While we're filming, I try to sort of, instead of speaking out loud, I try to say codes to John, and I'm asking him to take a photo or something. He's oh, going, a photo? Oh. He's going, what? What? I'm like, oh, my well, God. I don't know if you to If you were a now. woman, you would have known what I, I meant. Want, no offence, women, but I don't want to be a woman. <laughs> You guys, yeah. All right. Which way you want me to take it? All right. Well, there's even a three-bedroom family house. Oh. We'll camping grounds and kitchen, cabin available. Or car yeah. Camping grounds and kitchen, cabin accommodation, three-bedroom family house. What do you mean a fee will apply to you? Natural a spring water. Barbecues off a non paying campers. Oh. Yeah. So we're over here, that's got power to water sites and in, in the middle where we're parked. Where the paupers are parked, the tide asses. <sighs> the tide asses. Everyone it's... else got electricity with their air conditioners running, but no, 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 we'll have the fans going. Oh, no, it's all right. I don't mind not having air conditioning. Such a freaking winter. And sweating profusely. It's a good way of um, losing weight. So here, there's what they call the mud bar. And apparently between five and seven in the on season. I think we're about probably in the off season now. But they have um, like a bar. You can buy drinks here. Um, Did you say bath or bar? Bar drinks. We well, can't buy drinks in like a bar. Said, it sounded like you said bath again. You don't try buy drinks in a bath. You buy them in a bar. You said. If you rewind that, you oh. said. You said. Oh, anyway. Did I sound like I said bath or bar? Can oh, you put it in the comments the guys below? Will with me. Oh, I'm sure they will. Amazing, I think but everyone wants to see you walk up that hill. God, they, they do. I'm not walking up the hill. Walk up the hill. No. Why? Because I've just eaten dinner and I'll get a stitch. We'll wait half an hour. No, stop. I think this building down here is the mud bar. B A R. So you said John. it properly that time. Oh my god. I said it properly the first time. Look. And that's it. That's Banker Banker. That's it. So, so where's the overflow? That must be the overflow behind over, the house. Over behind the house here. So in the on season, apparently they have singers of a night time and stuff. From what food I read trucks. on food truck, there was a food tr truck here. From what I read on Wiki Camps, so I haven't experienced or we haven't experienced that, so we don't know don't for know. sure. I use Wiki Camps and Camps Australia uh -huh. every day. But Wiki obviously has more info. I could put the drone up now. The no, no drones. No what? drones here. No drones here. Really? Really at the front door it said no drones. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm sure it was this one. Where were we last night? Buckley Homestead. When you turn it on to tell you you can't use it or not. I won't do it though. I feel like it was here it's or so. It's too dark. I might lose it. Yeah. John's at it again. Do a good job, babe. Yeah. You got it all clean? I don't think it wasn't actually that dirty. Oh, okay, that's good. So I think more streaks up there than anything. It was very funny sitting there and watching the stick coming through our roof. The roof. 
Yeah. We've got the sweat, and that's a nice block, I think. How nice do you think it is at Benka Benka? It's nice. Very relaxing. It's nice, relaxing tree. There's a there's it's 33 degrees. Okay, okay, we've left Benka Benka. Um, so if you are planning to go to Benka Benka, we weren't that excited about it. Um, we are in the off season, so none of the activities ha happening anyhow. But unless just, you want electricity, yeah. If not, just stay at Gunpowder. No, 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 Attack Creek. Attack Creek. Attack ah. Creek, just yeah. down the road, like five minutes down oh, the road, was, and it's free. Yeah, it's free yeah. And it was nice. Anyhow, so we've left Benka Benka, and we're now just stopped at a town called Elliot to grab some fuel. Um, now, oh gosh, I hope the that's wind right. is terrible. And we haven't put our mics on again. All right, so we stopped at this war memorial here, just there, and I'm just going to read it what it says. You hold that. That's it. Oh, John's got the selfie stick again. I know. What did I do, right. what did I do to deserve the selfie stick? The war memorial. Have I been good? Shh, yeah. Shh. What did I do to be good? Stop. Let me read this first, okay? So I can do the, it again. Yes. Yeah. The Elliott Memorial Park commemorates the fact the township was established during World War II as a staging camp for troops travelling north. The town was named after the camp commander, Captain R.D. Elliott, whose nickname was Snow. You're going to take it off you again, aren't you? I am, so I'm going to show you um, the war memorial. And I'm going to just, just read this on what exactly a staging camp is, because I'm seeing that a lot, but I don't know what it means. Uh, so, have a look. All right, let's have a look. No idea. Lest we forget. Oh, okay. Bethy, Bessie Bathurn, born 1924. Bessie worked at this very staging camp between 1942 and 1945, washing bed linen and bandages. The camp sheltered. Can't read the rest. I can't read that. It's just too gone. Bessie left behind so many beautiful memories and touched so many lives with her life stories that she was so proud to share lest we forget Elliot staging camp originally known as number eight Ball newcastle waters this town was uniquely named after army lieutenant snow Elliot, who established number seven australian personal staging camp in the area in the census carried out on the 7th of December 1943, officers and 80 other, 81 other ranks were recorded on site. There's too much to read there. This wind will blow a dog off a chain. Do you reckon? <laughs> Do you, that's a good one. Do you Next stop's going to be... Hang on. How far away? Next stop is Newcastle Waters Rest Area and it's a ghost town. <gasps> I love ghost towns. Yeah. Is it haunted? I doubt it. No, you should know the answer oh, to my question. Have we been over this? <laughs> Is it haunted? Hold that, John. Hold it. Wow. Yeah. Did I do something special? <laughs> I must have done something special, eh? Oh, I don't know what it is. Okay, let's go. Shut up. Let's go get petrol. It wasn't long. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 We have pulled into Newcastle Waters. It's about five kilometres off the highway, to the left. If you leave, if you come through Elliot, um, on the right on the highway is a rest area that people stay at, but. We didn't sort of didn't get really, the feel no, of it, did we? We, it might, was, we might go to the next if there's another one up further, I think. It was just one of those pull-off areas, you know, where you just stop for a, a toilet, break. Toilet, toilet break, break. Keep going. It was, yeah. So maybe. Anyhow, we've got our mics on. There's mine, there's mine. John's, and we're hoping that um, the sound works. Oh, things going up and down on that as well. Oh, so maybe it is working. So, all right, let's all right. go and have a look. So Newcastle Waters, we've just stopped at a park and it's got a bronze statue of a drover. So we're just going to quickly look at that um, and then we'll keep going to the town. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right, let's go look at the drover. I'd be interested to see how there. the sound comes out because it is really windy and we've got our little, what do they call them, dead cat things on? Uh, dead cat, muffly 
fluffy things. We just like professionals. <laughs> yeah, right. We've got to remember not to talk too loud. Oh, look, John. Look at that tin shed over there. It's a church. Yeah. All right. He's nearly as tall as me, this guy. Let's read the plaques. Newcastle Waters Drovers Memorial Park in commemoration of all our drovers, unsung heroes of the past and pioneers of the cattle industry. As the stock is slowly stringing, Clancy rides behind them singing. For the drover's life has pleasures that the town folk never knew. Which is from Clancy of the Overflow. Okay. Do you know who that is, John? Uh, 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 we'll just say yes. A.B. Patterson. Okay. And let's go, there's another plaque. So that's actually very well done. Is, it, co is it concrete? He's ba it's bronze. It's hollow. Even, even to his little belt buckle, look at that, the detail in that. That's so cool. What's this one say? In commemoration of the contribution made by the early pioneers of the Northern Territory cattle industry. Okay, there's another right. one over oh, there. Oh, look at this book. Can you see that? No. Wow. How could you miss that? How could you miss that book? I saw a rock. I didn't see a book. That is awesome. And I'm not going to read it all because there's too much on there. This plaque commemorates John McDowell Stewart and his companions. Stewart discovered the local waters on the 23rd of May 1861 and during, during his fifth expedition he named them Glenfield Lagoon but the name was later changed to Newcastle Waters to honour the Duke of Newcastle Secretary of the States and the, for the colonies. That is really cool. cool. That is really cool. That is really cool. It's just too big for me to read it all. That's right. Wood and onward, onward and So we'll get wood. in the car. Because it's, there's a lot of flies, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about this Newcastle Waters. And then we're going to go down. It is classed as a ghost town. But, you know, there's a school and a church here, so it couldn't be too ghosty. Those flies are bloody sticky again, aren't they? They are. Why are some flies more sticky than others? That's not really a ghost, a ghost town if there's people well, still here. Well, that's what I just said. It's supposed to be a ghost town, but there's a school. Turn Your left. Will be on the left. Okay, 400 well, metres. There's people in, in Habitat. There's even a caravan out the back of that guy's house. Okay, there's supposed to be a an old shop here, which must be it down there, I suppose. It says that it's a well-signed area. Oh, I've got a horse float in that one. <laughs> That's the, the general store, so we can walk through that, John. You can walk through it? Yeah. Oh. And you can walk through this one as well. Yep. Okay, let me back it up. Johnny, we'll just have a chat for a minute because there's so many flies. And I'll just tell you about the Newcastle Waters, all right? The owners of Newcastle Waters, that, so the town, is the Consolidated Pastoral Company. Okay. Right, Newcastle Waters is the largest of the company's eight cat Australian cattle properties and supplied cattle to one of Australia's largest live cattle export markets, which is Indonesia. Of course. Um, and also, there's no camping down here. There's no, a sign there's back no there. camping. Okay. Um, I've got information all over the place. I should show them my scribble paper, hey? The location was named by the explorer John McDowell Stewart. On his journey across Australia, he reached an area on the 23rd of May, 1861, and set up camp. He wrote, We came across a splendid reach of water about 150 yards wide. Oh, water. <laughs> this I have named Newcastle Waters, after His Grace, the Duke of Newcastle, the secretary secretary for the colonies. Um, so New petrol bowls are there. Oh, there is too. Newcastle Waters is located 790 kilometres north of Alice Springs and 716 kilometres south of Darwin. 
um, it's on, it sits on 10,353 square kilometres of land. That's a lot of land. Yeah. All right. So we can walk through Jones's store and the Junction Hotel. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Just, but yeah. So that was a bit disappointing. Well, it's not. It's an old town. Don't yeah, be like no, that, John. I'm not... I thought oh, it was going to be like a proper, proper... He just wants to go to a ghost town a like the Brady town. Bunch did. Yeah, like that's the Brady Bunch you, did. Yeah, that's all John talks about. With the tumbleweeds. With the, tumble, yep, yep, I knew that's what yep, you were... Yep. yep. Yeah. But yeah. Did you watch the Brady Bunch? Pop it in the comments below if you know the... I didn't really watch it. The, the, the episode John's talking about where they go into a ghost town and yeah. He, that's a proper ghost town. That's what he wants. Is a freaking bloody hell. Okay. Oh. And you're saying it's not a ghost town. Hear that sound? That was the wind with the friggin' iron. Well, it was like when we were at that hospital at Thargaminda. Another petrol bowser. So this was the general store. They don't sell coke here? I could no. do the coke. The, it's, oh, and the Junction Hotel. So hang on a minute, John. Oh. Hang on, oh, information in time. Oh, I'm going to go put the gas, the fridge on gas. All right, I'll read the sign. In return for a clearance of their debts to the storekeeper, Jack Sargent, creditors built the hotel for him in the early 1930s. Max Scober <coughs> took over the hotel shortly afterwards and his name and the Junction Hotel became synonymous. A store was built next to the hotel in the 1950s and Max managed both establishments. Built between 1935 and 1955, accommodation and facilities were built behind the hotel. Being at the junction of the great droving routes, hence the name, and the Stuart Highway, the business thrived. In later oh, years, Shober moved his business and transferred the hotel license to Elliot, which was the town we went through down the road. The properties were sold and the Junction Hotel operated a bottle license before it was sold to Newcastle's water stations. The hotel was closed down in 1976. So this is pretty awesome. See, I can take your places, John. So that must have been the old fridge. I don't know, they would have had to put ice in it back in those bar. days, I imagine. Yeah, I know, that's cool. All right, and there's this one. Look at the I'd... haze in the background. Out of the wind yeah. must be the dust. So what we come up next? What's next? I don't know what this place is because that was the hotel, and I thought it was the general store as well. Well, going here, there's no signs on this one. I think this was the general store. I think the sign said the general store was built next door. That is it. There's so something people down there. People definitely but... live out here, anyhow. Oh, there's, but... two, there's two guys out the back there. Yeah. Oh, was there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Feels a bit weird. Wonder what that was, John. Oh, 
like a it's hen a house. service station, I'd imagine. A lock up or something. You bad misbehaviour going there. That's sort of it. That's it, I think. That's all it sort of said. Walk through Jones's store. Okay, well, we did that. I wonder if they get many people coming out here to have a look. I wonder. That's going to have some wheat mix that I had for breakfast. It's the second flight I've, I've eaten on this trip. The taste bomb is I hate those sticky flies, the ones that just you actually got to put your hand on your face to move. Here's a memorial. We've stopped here. It's something to do with the telephone lines. There's an arrow on the ground. I've got no service. The Overland Telegraph Line. This is a uh, memorial to Sir Charles Todd and I'm going to tell you in the car what he did because there's too many flies and I just ate one. <laughs> they taste like? You don't taste them, they just go, it just went straight down my throat. Do you reckon they swim around in your belly? <laughs> no, I think the acid in the belly would kill them. That's just what it is, just there. Go down there, that's when you kill them straight away. It'd be like that'd be and then slowly kill them, wouldn't it? I don't know, John. I would imagine not, but that'd be interesting. Yeah. The, the thought that the, there's two flies in my belly. Oh, I meat that. Good meat on them. Is there meat on flies? There has to be meat on flies. There's meat on every living creature. There's a water tank here and there's so many birds around and there's a little ice cream container so John's just been filling it up. And the birds just came for miles. <laughs> they got lots there. So you're, gonna, you're not getting in the car? No, you can drive up. You, you're good. What sort of bird are they? Anyhow, we're going to have some lunch and then make our way up to Dally Waters. 